forest landscape, lush with trees and bushes, nestled in the mountains and cliffs of Rockland County. A vast river that stretches out into the mouth of the Atlantic Ocean where people and wildlife come to visit. This landscape was once even more beautiful and far more safe. Now, the Hudson River has become infected with toxic pollutants, as have the animals that live within the Hudson or on its shores. Glass eels, a catadermous or migrating species of fish that populates the Bay Area of North America, have existed since the Cretaceous period, which was around 65 to 145 million years ago. The asteroid that wiped out all non-avian dinosaurs during this time period also caused massive sulfuric and carbon dioxide pollution in the atmosphere, which, in addition to the asteroid, induced a natural global warming for humans and wildlife alike. <laughs> um, glass eels were among the 25% the of all living species to survive these catastrophic events. Comparatively, human beings appeared only 2 million years ago. So why are we, the younger of the species, the ones who are causing the extinction of a species that survives such events? Ecological wonders are constantly being used for human pleasantry or financial gain. Biological organisms struggle to stay afloat in a parasitic system that leaches them dry of any preceding essence. Anguilla rostrata, or the American glass eel, were a species unfortunate enough to fall into the biological trap of inferiority and human desire, causing them to become commoditized and sold until they are nearly extinct. For the past two years, I have participated in a study along the Meneciago Creek, which is run by the Hudson River Bay Eel Project. From 2020 through 2021, our findings were shocking. Numbers skyrocketed and growth patterns were enormous, unlike that of previous years. Even in March of 2022, we noticed a surge in numbers that was comparatively quite rare. I recall a chilly April day in the freezing creek, my brittle and numb fingers in rough waters where we found over 16,000 eels in that net. For reference, the net was about the size of a sleeping bag that had been underwater for four weeks. While this did not make sense at first, as climate change is increasing and glass eels, along with other species, should be appearing less and less. Take a closer look at the numbers, though, and you'll find that glass eels are appearing fewer times and in smaller abundance over the late spring months. This is because glass eels are a eurythmic species, meaning that they can survive in a wide variety of temperatures, but are susceptible to increased temperatures. Increased water temperature has been proven to jeopardize eels and lower their survival rates overall. While this may cause an influx in population from late March to early April, it may also cause a decrease in numbers over the late spring months. Although we experienced a surge in population, the glass eel population has dropped significantly by over 90% since the late 1980s. In fact, Inder Science Publishers warns that global warming will likely drive glass eels to extinction. Another reason for glass eel population decline is potent water chemicals. Polyfluoroalkali substances, referred to as PFAS chemicals, can discharge into our drinking water through PFAS producing facilities such as cleaning product factories or beauty product facilities. These chemicals cannot be filtered thoroughly due to their harsh chemical profile and excessive variation, leading them to enter our rivers and streams. They may also collect in groundwater, causing them to leach into our drinking water and showers. Not only do these chemicals create issues for fish and other aquatic life, but also for humans. Over time, increased exposure to the chemicals can lead to issues like cancer, liver damage, decreased fertility, increased risk of developing asthma, um, and thyroid disease, which can lead to metabolic disorders. The water you are drinking right now likely has some amount of chemicals in it, yes, even if it's filtered, but the amount currently considered safe by the FDA is around 70 parts per trillion. Unfortunately, Americans now have a whopping 3,400 parts per trillion of PFAS chemicals in their blood of PFOS and 1,100 parts per trillion of PFOA. These chemicals can remain in a detectable amount in your system for about two to nine years. While this may seem like a long time for the chemicals to, can re to remain in your system, imagine the effect they have in the surrounding ecosystem. So what does this mean for glass eels? 
Glass gills are particularly sensitive to these chemicals due to their high lipid content. High lipid levels in glass gills may cause lipid um, or oxidative stress to occur. Oxidative stress is basically when the fats in your body begin to deteriorate, specifically those in your brain. In animals, this can lead to um, stressors like mitotoxins, inflammation, and neurological disorders. Another reason eels are impacted by environmental changes is that acidic variables and water temperature have been proven to inhibit migration or affect sensory skills. This can impact eels' magnetic compass. Since we know that that's vital to eels' migration and that their sensory skills are impacted by climate change, we can expect them to lose their way at some point or struggle to make the journey. Some eels are even sucked into power plants along the Hudson River Bay before entering an estuary and mating, which can have devastating consequences for their survival. Intensive fish farming, or when farmers are looking to hold the maximum amount of fish for the least amount of water, is one of the most considerable factors in an eel's gender designation. Farming can influence a majority male population, creating obvious issues for the growth and reproduction of the species. Intensive fish farming and overfishing are considerable factors in the endangerment of glass eels. An even more significant threat is eel trafficking. The eel trafficking business is one of the most lucrative trades of any species worldwide, generating over $1 billion each year. Intensive fish farming um, can lead to eels being sold for, well, elvers or baby eels being sold for $2,000 each year. Um, for one pound of baby elvers being sold for $2,000. This, the reason for this, um, eels are sold as um, to seed stock as to agricultural companies and eventually turned into food. Um, many people may remove eels from their natural habitats once they have grown to full capacity or even while they are still babies. They are currently regarded as an endangered species and are highly protected. Despite this, the population continues to decrease yearly due to issues like pollutants, illegal trafficking, and other harmful substances found in our waterways. Glass eels, a species which survived the third largest extinction in history are currently declining in population for over the for the past 40 years um, unfortunately they are not the only species destined to go extinct as climate change progresses in fact there are now 41,415 species on the IUNC red list of which 16,306 are threatened with extinction this can have catastrophe catastrophic damage on our ecosystem as the extinction of one species will impact the livelihood of so many others um, pathologists and ecologists currently believe that we are now in the midst of the sixth mass extinction for humans and wildlife alike. We do not take action now, our outlook darkens. One way you can help preserve these essential creatures is by recycling and picking up litter from our roads. PFAS chemicals um, can discharge into our drinking water and become very harmful for the surrounding ecosystem, so making sure these chemicals are not in our waterways is essential. Victim blaming is common when it comes to climate change. Unfortunately, the impact a singular person has is minuscule. But when we come together, we can make immense progress. Everyone must do their part, and only then will we truly accomplish something. Larger companies that release these chemicals into our waterways are also to blame. This is why we must take action in legislative policies surrounding water protection in our community and in doing our individual parts to mitigate our carbon footprints and look towards the future for a better perspective. Otherwise, future generations will be forced to live in a graveyard of trees and further in a cemetery of the world. Thank you.